and sisters. So this is going to be starting a series that I'm pretty excited about. It's going to be a study on the Christian walk, and I'm going to be going over verses and passages of uh, commands for things that Christians should walk in, basically. But today it's going to be about walking after, and it's going to be walking after the Spirit. And I'm going to go over a passage, uh, Romans 8, 1 through 16. So I'm just going to jump right into that. So chapter 7 is Paul talking about his struggle, uh, his failing condition, okay, while he's in the flesh. Um, and chapter 8 is about the focus on his perfect, unfailing position. So chapter 7 is the failing condition of a Christian. Chapter, seven, or chapter 8 is the unfailing position of a Christian, which is in Christ, okay, which we are eternally secure, um, we have assurance in our salvation. Um, the more that we focus on our position, it will affect and change our condition. So, Romans chapter 8 is a great chapter on eternal security. There's lots of verses that teach that, and also I think John 6 is a good chapter for that. So if you can remember that, when you're thinking, talking about eternal security of the believer, John 6, Romans 8, those are both awesome chapters for that. So I'm just going to go by verse by verse and give some insight. Uh, Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay, so there can be some confusion on this verse. Uh, people who teach that you can lose salvation, they will twist this verse. They'll say there is no condemnation uh, as long as you are walking after the Spirit. But if you're saved and you walk after the flesh, then you lose your salvation and there is condemnation. That's a completely false interpretation of this verse. Now we are talking about eternally when it says no condemnation. We are talking about uh, God's judgment. Okay, so what's being said here is that uh, the believers are secure in Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Okay, now I'm going to share a couple of cross-references. John 3.18 John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So it's the exact same idea here. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you're saved, you're not, you not condemned. Okay, No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Let's look at John 5.24. John 5.24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Same idea. Okay? No condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. That means, once saved, always saved. Never going to lose your salvation. And uh, so it says, Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And this same... Uh, that is reset again in verse 4. Um, you know, modern translations will remove this from, from the Bible. And, uh, but I'm a King James Bible believer. I believe that it should be there. But, and this is why I'm making this video. Um, but, but walk after the Spirit. So what is being said here? Well, those who are saved do walk after the Spirit. Okay, uh, Those who are not saved... They can only walk after the flesh. They cannot walk after the Spirit. Those who are saved walk after the Spirit, okay? But they can still sin and, uh, you know, give occasion to the flesh, I guess. So, it's just saying that, so those who walk after the Spirit are people who are saved. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the lost and the saved, okay? And there's no condemnation to those who are saved. So, continuing, Romans 8, verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So this is uh, an answer to verse 1. It says, there is, no, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay? The, with the law of sin and death, um, as humans, all we will do is fail and fall and crash. We can never meet up to those standards. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ, we are able to please God. Okay. So Romans 8 verse 3, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son 
in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemns sin in the flesh. Okay, so, for what the law could not do, the law of sin and death, it could not justify, it could not sanctify, it could not make a sinner a saint, and that it was weak through the flesh. This means that the problem is with the... The problem is with mankind, okay, not with the law, because mankind is weak. It could not fulfill the law. Um, so, uh, you know, the law brought a curse because mankind could not fill, fulfill the law. So God, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, okay, so for sin means a sacrifice for sin sent his son for a sacrifice of sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That means that God's judgment was on Jesus, okay, for our, for our sake, for our behalf. Um, so what we got here basically is the gospel message. You know, this is pretty much just like John 3.16. It says, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Okay, this is also a verse that can be used for the, in, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Um, it says, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay, it doesn't say in sinful flesh because Jesus is not a sinner. Um, let's see here. I don't remember what else I was going to say. Anyways... So continuing, I'll go on, Romans 8, verse 4, that the, righteous, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay, so the righteousness is the righteous requirements of the law. Um, so that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, not by us, but in us, who walk after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Again, so this is talking about you know, in us who are saved, okay, those who walk after the flesh are lost, those who walk after the spirit are saved, okay, and the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us by God, not by us, so Romans 8 verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit mind the things of the Spirit. So this means that they set their minds on. They that are after the flesh mind, set their mind on the flesh. They that are after the Spirit set their minds on things of the, the Spirit. Um, verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity with against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Okay, the flesh is unable to submit to the law of God. Uh, the flesh is not submissive; it rebels against God. Verse eight. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It is impossible uh, for a lost person to please God. Um, verse nine. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay, so this verse we learn about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwell in you. Those who are saved have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and some uh, you know, false teachers will say that you need a second blessing of the Holy Spirit, like you can be saved and the Spirit's not in you yet, or whatever, and that's false. Whoever is saved has the Holy Spirit inside them. Um, if any man not have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Verse number 10, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So verse 10 it starts off, If Christ be in you, and in verse 1 it says, There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ. So we learn that the person who is saved is in Christ, and Christ is in them. Okay. Um, the body is dead because of the body is dead because of sin. That means that it's mortal. It's subject to death, disease, because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if okay, verse eleven. But if the spirit of God, 
If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay, this is talking about him that raised up Jesus from the dead is God the Father. So the spirit of God the Father dwells in the person who is saved. And he will also uh, raise up their bodies from the dead. So that's the bodily resurrection in the future for the believer. Verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Okay, we're not obligated to the flesh. We've already, you know, sinned in our life and, and gave too much to the flesh already. Now uh, we're saved and we need to, we're obligated to, to serve the Spirit. Verse 13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Okay. Uh, for if ye live, that's a present tense that means constantly, after the flesh ye shall die. That means spiritually. So this is talking about someone who is lost. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Okay, so a person who is saved will mortify the deeds uh, of their body through the Spirit. Verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we see here that believers are led by the Spirit, and verse 9 says that they are indwelled by the Spirit. So believers are indwelled by the Spirit and led by the Spirit. Uh, verse 15, For ye have, not re ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay, the spirit of bondage again to fear. That means that we are not a slave, fearfully standing before a strict and hard master, but like, but like a son or a child before a father. Um, we have received the spirit of adoption. That's a love relationship, not a legal relationship. And verse 16, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And I've heard someone use this uh, for assurance of salvation. They said, what a stupid argument it is that someone might say, well, a person can be saved and they can choose not to be saved. Well, they said, well, the spirit bears... Uh, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of the God of children of God, and that a person's going to uh, just walk away from that. <laughs> you know, it's a completely ridiculous argument. Okay, if a, a person realizes that they're a lost sinner headed to hell and they need saved, then you know why would they later on decide they don't want that? You know, once you're saved, you're always saved. There's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Period. Uh, who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. So walking after the Spirit in this whole passage is talking about a person who is saved. Okay? Not just, not something that a person that is saved does. This is something that a person, this is something that only a saved person can do, and that, what they, that they will do. Okay? Walking after the Spirit. Saved people walk after the Spirit, period. So this is talking about saved people. So, that's the beginning of the study on the Christian walk, walking after the Spirit. Um, if you are saved, you will walk after the Spirit. Um, and that's that. So thanks for watching. God bless you. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.